One of the big problems that people have when trying to use simulations is that they don't really know how to go about building a simulation. What do I? What are the steps I have to go through? And at one level, that's an unanswerable question. Because simulations are so variable, because they have so much flexibility in time, space, resource, issue, process, that there's not, there's not a single model. At the same time, what I want to try and do in this short video is give you some ideas about how you might go through the steps of building a simulation. And as we'll see, that's quite generic, but I think it's still something which allows us to uh, understand the processes that are behind it and the logical steps that we go through. So what's the first thing? The first thing is identifying the objective of the task. So you need to know very clearly from the start what it is you're trying to do. So in my case as a political scientist, I'm interested in the European Union. So I might think, I want to do a simulation about the European Union. Now, clearly already we've got a problem. The European Union, uh, as I think all of us uh, have some vague knowledge of, is a big, complicated international organisation. So I need to focus down on something. What is it about the European Union that I'm interested in? Is it about a particular institution? Is it about the relationship between different countries within the European Union? Is it about the relationship between the European Union and the outside world? Am I interested, for example, in a single policy area? If I can get down into those kind of questions, then I can start to get a better handle on it. So let's say I'm interested in the European Parliament. So I've got my institution. My question then is, what is it I'm interested in the European Parliament? Because the European Parliament, like any Parliament, is quite complicated uh, to model in its entirety. It's very difficult to model in its entirety. So what is it I'm interested in? Is it about the way the European Parliament passes legislation? Is it about the relationship between different MEPs? Is it about the relationship between the President of the European Parliament and different factions within it? Its relationship to other institutions? Again, what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to drill down and down. So is there some process that I'm interested in? Is there some kind of uh, theoretical concept that I want to address? Am I interested in the way that new MEPs get socialised, for example, into the work of their group? Once I've got a clear handle on what I'm trying to do, that's really the heart of the simulation. So, uh, let's take some different examples. When we think about lawyers, uh, often what they're interested in is accessing an understanding of particular legal concepts. Now, one way to do that, the most obvious way to do that in a legal context, is to have a moot. So we give different students roles, and we say, argue a case which uh, conveniently lets us access all the different elements that the case law uh, already has expounded, so that we can then start to integrate those different elements together. Likewise, if we think about uh, economics, then we might be thinking about simulations perhaps in a more... Uh, computer-based uh, model, so modelling, but also clearly we can think about the economic uh, consequences for public policy, for economic actors. So thinking, and this shades then clearly into things like business management, how do different actors understand different processes? So what would be a rational or a good strategy for engaging with national tax codes, for example? So what are the kinds of dynamics that exist there? Whatever our discipline, the key is to know what we're trying to achieve. What is it we want the students to come out at the end of the simulation knowing about? The second stage in building a simulation, after you've got that central concept, is thinking about the mechanism. What is it that I am going to do that will let me access that particular phenomenon? So am I thinking about some kind of formal meeting with uh, particular assigned roles? Am I thinking about something that is more abstractly constructed, so not necessarily specifically or directly 
about the phenomenon that I'm interested in, but rather one which distracts students and lets them uh, discover the concept. Am I interested in doing it in a way that is much more informal and flexible, where we just give them a situation and they have to work out what they're going to do? Are they trying to produce some kind of collaborative document? Are they uh, trying to produce some kind of output? Again, there are no right answers, and usually the phenomenon that we are interested in, the kinds of materials that we're looking at, will suggest some kind of scenario that lets us get into that kind of uh, situation. That's why lawyers are interested in moots, it's why political scientists are interested in recreating parliaments or cabinets or government type meetings. All of those things are very open, but again we just need to make sure that the scenario that we're using, the mechanism, allows us to access the, the core idea. After that the steps are about thinking of the number of students that you are involving. Is it a small group, a large group? Often you won't have a choice in the matter that if you're thinking about uh, your group size you often have to work with what you've got. Big groups tend to be more complicated obviously so we might think about breaking that down into having several parallel simulations or doing lots of working groups or subcommittees that let uh, all students have a reasonable opportunity of participating and then working together to produce a, a big plenary kind of meeting and a plenary kind of document. The other issue that clearly is important is how much time do you have? And again, this is usually a function in a university setting of the timetable. So have you got two hours? Have you got 30 minutes? Have you got two days? Have you got the whole semester? Uh, do you have the luxury of having as much time as you want? And coupled to that clearly then is what kind of space have I got? Uh, have I got uh, access to an appropriate kind of room? Final step, I think, is thinking about whether there's any assessment attached to that. Do I have to give marks for this? In some cases you might not need to or you might not be able to. If you do have to, then you need to think about what it is you're trying to mark. You're trying to mark how the students have acted within the simulation itself. So you're trying to uh, grade their participation and engagement. In that case, you need to think about can you actually watch all these people do that? Are you interested in assessing the knowledge that they've developed? So in that case, you might still be able to tie that into a, a module with a, an exam or some kind of piece of uh, coursework after the fact. Are you interested in developing their reflection on their skills development? In which case you might think about some kind of reflective piece that they do straight after the simulation. Again, all of these things are flexible and as you can see we've already got four or five different key dimensions which let us do vastly different things. The main point though is thinking about that central concept. If we can get the central concept and we can be clear at the end of adding all of these other elements that we're still hitting that target, then I think we can be fairly confident that the game will work.